Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be presenting a robotic uh, thoracic surgery port placement for different kinds of procedure in front of the doyens of uh, thoracic surgery, Dr. Arvind Kumar, Dr. Ali Zamir Khan, and uh, the world-renowned figure uh, in robotic thoracic surgery, Dr. Robert James Serfolio. I'm thankful to Dr. Arvind for giving me this opportunity. And uh, we straight away move on to uh, positioning and the port placement in different thoracic surgery. Uh, there are various procedures that I'll be discussing in short because of the time constraints. Uh, would be robotic thymectomy, uh, lobectomy, esophagectomy, and certain miscellaneous procedures which will involve mediastinal cysts and tumors. Now the basic uh, uh, protocol would be to understand the procedure briefly, what is the positioning, the OR room setup, the exact port placement, uh, the docking, and if there's small tips for troubleshooting any problems. We always use, uh, uh, under general anesthesia of course, with a double lumen tube to achieve lung isolation and get the space uh, for putting in our ports and all. The position is very uh, important. This is what we use, Dr. Arvind has already uh, said, but I'll just elaborate a little bit. Uh, this is a supine position with a 30 degree right, left sided up because we use a left sided approach for most of our thymic uh, cases and we place a towel uh, beneath the uh, on the right side just to elevate it enough for the and the arm is brought down to below the table and uh, as I'll show you in the next picture it is supported on the bean bag. This is extremely important to put the hand right next to the patient and as low and under as possible and close to the bed as possible. This will avoid any sort of uh, interaction of the robotic arms with the shoulder as well as uh, the uh, arm of the patient. Now the standard port placement uh, when we started off was uh, a fifth intercostal space anterior axillary line port for the camera. What I would do is uh, I would see the uh, sternal angle and I will draw a line, uh, a triangle starting from the sternal notch right to the ziffy sternum and at the, in the middle of that we will put the camera port, which roughly corresponds to the fifth intercostal space uh, mid axillary line. The robotic arm one, this has been wrongly uh, marked as R2, uh, would be uh, placed in the third uh, intercostal space anterior axillary line. And as Dr. Arvind told, we initially started off with putting the ports in a little more medial position than it is. So uh, a little more medial position, but then I realized uh, the, the dissection of the uh, inferior most portion of the uh, dissection was a little more difficult and so what we did was we moved the port uh, towards this side a little lateral and that gave me a very good triangulation uh, uh, for the entire target anatomy so if you see this would be my target anatomy from the camera port and this port would not help me go in this area so what I did was I moved the port in this direction uh, which made me very easy to take care of all the entire target anatomy very well. The OR setup would be uh, this way. The, o, the robot is docked over from the patient over the right uh, shoulder because we are using a left-sided approach. Of course, for the left, uh, if, when we use it for the right side, this will change. Uh, the vision card is placed uh, in front of the assistant surgeon. Uh, the surgeon is sitting at the console and has a very clear view of the patient as well as the robotic arms. The nurse is there and there, the anesthesiologist with the uh, anesthesia machine will be lying. So this is a small uh, video which uh, will show you. Now we have already uh, placed in a 5mm, start with a 5mm camera port in the 5th uh, intercostal space. As I told you, I draw a line across the sternal angle. We infiltrate the ports with the local anesthesia and then uh, make a small incision. Uh, I would suggest not making too big incisions because that would make the ports loose and it will be difficult to manage otherwise. So under vision we put in uh, our ports. This is the this uh, the cranial port that is the forearm one uh, in the third intercostal space anterior axillary line and it is very important to mark your ports well now you see the movement uh, it's completely free movement absolutely no talk whatsoever now now this is what i told we have changed our port placement from going to this part to coming on to more lateral and, uh, and this is the second port which allows us to do a complete radical dissection without having to swap our arms. Again, it's very important when you're putting in your ports in the chest, it's very important that you do not uh, exert too much of force. You control it and do it always under vision. And again, you must see that I'm just making the incision just enough for the ports to uh, fit in very snugly. And these are metallic ports, usually do not cause much of the uh, skin burning and all those problems. 
and again you guard your port very well because you're putting in the chest and mind it i'm on the left side so the pericardium is right beneath it again we're now using a 5 Okay, okay. All right. No, oh, sure, sir. So again, you see no talk whatsoever, completely free movements. Now this is the assistant port. You have two options. One you can put these assistant port between the camera and the R2 or you can go between the camera and R1 depending upon where you need it the most. Just uh, fast forward it a little bit. Now this is one more technique now we do what after having placed the camera port we put a endo specimen bag right before uh, the we start the surgery and we put in the apical uh, part of the chest and drop it there it saves us time uh, because uh, we uh, and then we put a, a rolled uh, gauze piece right in the beginning of the surgery so that you don't need to uh, ask the assistant for doing it again and again it saves uh, about 10 15 minutes of time in the post op Another important aspect when you start the process of docking you prepare the robot first properly you align the arm first you align arm 1 and arm 2 accordingly both the numbers are facing towards you and then move it up as much as possible and then start to now the docking process is starting from over the patient's right shoulder and it is in line so that the camera the target anatomy and the central column are in one straight line and the easiest port usually to dock is the camera port because it goes in very very easily so usually it's not a problem when you're doing uh, one now these are the ports that a little tricky when you start off your robotic program because uh, you have to really bring them down well align them with the port very perfectly and once you do that it's very easy to pop in and just uh, lock it you can see if you align it well it just goes in very easily and just docks it just takes 2 minutes not more than that Initially, when we started our uh, robotic uh, port placement and timing uh, for thymectomy, would be somewhere around 35, 40 minutes. But now I'm able to do it within within in the entire part within 10 minutes, and it's ready for the surgery. So that completes our uh, thymectomy port placement. We, these are the instruments uh, that we put. And notice you're insufflating your CO2 not through the camera. No, not through the camera. From from the axis port always. Another important point that I just wanted to mention. Uh, during the port placement part is once you put in your instruments inside the chest particularly when you're doing thymus and all there's very little space you have to be very very careful in putting your instruments inside just look at the movements are very slow and uh, movements and always always under guidance you do not move your ports unless you're seeing it you do not move the instruments inside unless you are able to see it very clearly so certain small tips uh, there are problems of external arm collisions there will always be problems of external arm collisions because uh, you have to have variable anatomy and sometimes you may not have the exact 9 cm uh, port distance between but to avoid that as far as possible try to maintain a good triangulation with at least uh, uh, 9 cm distance uh, we should always ensure a proper alignment of the central column uh, with the camera and the target anatomy that will ensure that your ports are being effectively utilized uh always uh, now there's one uh, problem when you're keeping your hands abducted um, adducted like this the superior port particularly if you place it uh, very high up then it may when the camera when you're doing the inferior dissection the camera the robotic arm hits the shoulder so that is why an idea is to try and move your port uh, placement a little more uh, the arc towards it if that is a problem or otherwise sometimes what i do is i just clutch the port and lift the arm slightly and it most of the times uh, solves the problem so we have not had any major problem uh, after that uh, the other part was the arms even if with this port placement you're not able to reach uh, the pericardiophrenic recess then you can you always use uh, interchange your uh, instruments from one arm to the other so that will lead to uh, most of the cases will solve the problem uh, opposite phrenic not visualized uh, this is quite a common for us it is more common when we using a right sided approach so what we do is we use a 5 mm camera for uh, this purpose as dr avind has already described now this is the position another important uh, uh, aspect for robotic lung resection uh, the you see the patient is put in such a way that the arm uh, the shoulder is above the iliac crest there is a good amount of break that is required for that uh, and it's a full lateral position except that what we ensure is that the uh, shoulder is above the level of the iliac uh, crest it helps you uh, and prevents the arm, camera arm hitting the patient's hip during the surgery and you adequately secure the patient for uh, we always use the dvt prophylaxis and uh, uh, positioning is uh, as this 
Again, the OR room setup is more or less similar, except for the fact that now the robot is coming from the cranial side and anteriorly at an angle of about 15 degrees. Uh, we follow the same approach as uh, Dr. Sofolio because I've also learned by watching his videos. And then he came, we were on, uh, lucky enough to, uh, that we had him last year and he showed us how to do that. And from since that time onwards, even before that we were following the same technique, but then it uh, made, me, made us hone up our skills and uh, we are doing exactly the same way. Can I suggest one thing? Can right. you just go back to that picture? Yes. Yeah. One thing we have changed here is that the anesthesiologist now has moved to the uh, for, for uh, we tried that, but a lot of our anesthesiologists are very uncomfortable with that. Uh, very, very comfortable. Very yeah, uncomfortable. We just put them down there, yeah. they are not in tune with the robot. So. We, uh, as I told you, uh, follow the CPRL4 technique as popularized by Dr. Sofolio, which is completely portal robotic lobectomy. Uh, a total a portal approach, we do not use any utility incision. The third arm is extremely useful. A lot of people who do not use third arms, like initially we were also very reluctant to use the third arm because uh, it gives a, a little bit of getting used to. Uh, but once you start using that, then you realize that uh, the amount of retraction that you can need and then it helps you in even the stapling the vessels by helping you aligning the lung well. And it's absolutely, absolutely brilliant use of uh, third arm. It, it, it leads to uh, the assistance being free and offer more uh, an efficient assistant during the surgery for the bedside uh, assistant. Now, uh, this is the, the markings. This is just a small video I'll show. The same um, uh, port uh, placement technique as uh, we use three arms. The third uh, arm is about two centimeters or three centimeters above the spine. R2 uh, will be about 9 centimeters in the 8th intercostal space, the camera in the same space, and R1, usually I move it to the 7th intercostal space in, to get a straight line. The most important part is this triangulation that is to be achieved between the camera port, the assistant, and uh, the R2. Uh, now, sorry, R1. There is one problem that we, we had initial problems uh, of taking down the inferior pulmonary ligament. Now, this is a, uh, a screenshot from uh, one of the uh, uh, intuitive cards. And what we used to do is uh, initially bring in the arms closer together. But uh, then that also had problems. So now from now on, what we are doing is we move the ports much inferior, even for, as told by Dr. Safolio, for eighth intercostal space for upper lobes. We're still using eight mostly for upper lobes. But occasionally, sometimes I do use in the ninth intercostal space. Uh, this is uh, the robotic esophagectomy. We started off with prone position, but now uh, we have moved on. These were the classical port placement in prone position. Uh, a camera arm just below the scapular tip. Uh, this is almost at the level of the D spine, and this would be a slightly diagonal line, uh, about nine centimeters away. And this will get a really good uh, uh, robotic uh, uh, esophagectomy. But then now we have changed to a mid prone position, and more or less these ports are almost in one straight line in one space. The first port in the just below the axillary hairline, uh, about nine centimeters below it, uh, another camera port, and two centimeters, uh, nine centimeters below it, the uh, uh, our third, the second arm. We are not using the third arm uh, for the robotic esophagus as I of apologize now. Apologize for keep interrupting, but no. and I know it's so important because for the anesthesiologist to have a double lumen in the patient lying down is a real problem with the roof of the mouth. So we're just doing a lateral the cube and really to really the bed, turn, yeah. avoiding all that. And it Absolutely. takes us now 11 minutes to position. As yeah, it, it reduces the time significantly yes. and makes your <coughs> job a lot easier. So mid-prone uh, positioning has uh, these advantages of no need for lung retraction, the reduced time in repositioning. The anesthetist is more comfortable. It's safer when conversion is required and more convenient port placement is required. Now, this was a good uh, case. I just wanted to show you briefly. Now, this was a small cystic lesion in the retrocardic area. If you can just barely appreciate it in that area. And uh, now this was the CT scan of the patient. Now, this posed a lot of uh, problem. You, you must notice that this is on the left side, not on the right side. So uh, what we did uh, was, I'll just show you what we, we used the same approach as we would use for esophagus, except for this side, it was the left sided up approach. And instead of pla and, uh, placing the ports in esophagus, I would just simply triangulate it to the anatomy. And uh, uh, it gave us a very beautiful dissection uh, of this and, and with no problems whatsoever. And you drive the robot we drive the, the robot back. from the patient's back uh, in straight line. It makes your job much easier rather than side docking. And uh, okay. so that completes right? the small some take home tips were uh, that select your cases well, plan the entire procedure, do a mental simulation of the uh, thing, ensure patient protection at all times, maintain minimum distance between the ports, and never move any instrument when not under vision. Thank you. Thank you very much.